Let's do some news! Today's date is August 27th, 2021, 2.24 p.m. I am 1150 kilometers away from Origin in Zone 5, awaiting one of my comrades to come by and drop off a PvP station so that we can mine some some rare ore. What the fuck are you talking about? <laughs> it's the thing I've been living and breathing <laughs> the past couple weeks. Hence the reason why there has not been a news episode in so long. Mostly because the news is kind of just recapping things, right? Then last week some shit happened, and I was like, let's wait until we get a good response. And then we got a response, and then everything kind of fell apart, and then everything's fine again. Let me walk you through that. Let me walk you through that. First, 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 we're going to go way back in time. We'll go, not necessarily the beginning of time, we're going to go to April... Uh, April 15th. Here's what's what the new MasterCard rules mean for adult sites and producers. So, April 15th, they announced, MasterCard announced that it was going to be making some changes to the way that it, um, to the requirements that it has for new, for sites that provide, uh, adult content. Right? Some of those requirements include... Uploads should only be permitted to verified content producer providers and all uploads are to be reviewed prior to publication for streaming providers. Monitoring must be in real time. <laughs> the requirements in this section generally have to do with obtaining a written agreement with each provider addressing illegal activity, written consent from all persons depicted consent uh, to the public distribution of the content consent to have the content downloaded and age verification documents. It's a lot. That's a lot. That's the rules that they that they had come up with. So we knew ahead of time something was going to probably happen. And it did. We got an article that dropped. This is on August 19th. So uh, about a week ago. And it was from Bloomberg. And it says, OnlyFans, the largest provider of amateur pornography on the internet. I think I think that's true now because Pornhub purged all of its all of its non-verified content. So OnlyFans is no longer after October 1st going to be uh, allowing explicit content. It says right here it says OnlyFans will prohibit users from posting any sexually explicit content citing mounting pressure from bank banking partners and payment providers. So this obviously obviously made a lot of people flip out. Right? Freak out a little bit. Um, now, I myself am an OnlyFans provider. That's right. For the, for the low, low price of, of Tree Fitty, you can see my penis. All right? What can I say? Um, and <laughs> whatever it takes, get subs, man. <laughs> so, but I knew. I was like, you know what? Like, I'm not doing anything necessarily explicit with that penis. You know? It's just kind of there. As long as I don't do anything with it, it's fine. So I knew that I was good. I knew that I was good. I was like, as long as I don't do anything with my penis and put it on OnlyFans, I'm okay. Because that's not sexually explicit. It's just nudity. So I knew I was good. I was like, no, I'm fine. I'm fine. It doesn't affect me. But it doesn't mean it doesn't have a negative effect on hundreds of thousands, maybe millions of providers on the site who bring in billions of dollars in revenue to OnlyFans by providing pictures of themselves touching them penis but penises. Right? They're they're touching it though, right? So they're 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 crossing that threshold. Once you once you grip it, explicit. Okay? And that was gonna be a no-go at the end of October 1st or after October 1st. Why? Because of disagreements with uh and mounting pressure from banking partners. What if you're just swinging it around, though? Ooh, that's a good question. Hmm, just helicoptering. I don't know if helicoptering really counts. So it was two days of, is this real? Is this really happening? Because it seems weird that OnlyFans, again, one of the largest largest providers of amateur pornography, was going to stop providing pornography. Uh, and the only thing we had was this Bloomberg article. For two days, no response from OnlyFans. And then finally, we get a response in the form of a tweet. It says, 
Dear sex workers, the OnlyFans community would not be what it is with today without you. The policy change was necessary to secure banking and payment services to support you. We are working around the clock to come up with solutions. Hashtag sex work is work. So, yeah. <laughs> The policy change was necessary to secure banking and payment services to support you. So they're also pointing their finger at MasterCard and Visa, right? We already know. We already know that MasterCard's already got rules. Probably MasterCard. MasterCard said in a statement, they said that they have nothing to do with the decisions that OnlyFans make, which is technically true. They didn't, they didn't tell them you can't support this stuff. They just said, oh yeah, if you want to, you have to verify everything before it goes up and monitor in real time any kind of live streaming that happens. But they didn't have anything to do with the decision that was made. Nothing. No, not fine. Now that is an unrealistic expectation of a company. Even OnlyFans, as big as it is, they probably don't have enough people on board to allow everyone to stream with one person monitoring their stream. At least one person monitoring their stream. Um, so what is it? My excuse of OnlyFans is that they just want to pull a tumbler and and and, and game game themselves. So, <clears throat> so Mastercard has had influence in this market because that's what happened with with uh, Pornhub. Pornhub ditched everything because of pressure from uh, from only from uh, Mastercard because of pressure from an article that was written on New York Times called "The Children of Pornhub," which basically said that Pornhub is benefiting uh, financially from the trafficking. Of, uh, of 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 women and uh, underage uh, uh, pornography. So that's what that was the claim was from the article. Now the article was was uh, ended up being essentially baseless. Um, and not saying it doesn't happen at all because it absolutely does. And Pornhub is not necessarily the uh, it's not a patron saint when it comes to uh, verifying everything. It's 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 disgustingly easy to make an account on Pornhub and just upload whatever you want. So if you wanna if you wanna touch your penis. And you want to put it somewhere, you can just throw it up on Pornhub. Super easy. It could not even be your penis. It could be somebody else's, right? Just post it up there. They'll never know, right? It'll be on Pornhub. Pornhub will make money off it somehow, advertisers or something. And that's it, right? There was no verification process. So Pornhub definitely needed, definitely needed a bit of a kick, right? So that's when the Great Purge happened last year. It was October or something like that, October 20th, uh, when they ended up purging everything. And that's why Pornhub uh, now only has verif verified uh, verified accounts so you know that you're getting that person's penis when you go there okay um which is important <laughs> a stranger penis what the fuck um so only fan stance was any explicit content they were they were going a step further now i should also note that you, when you create an account to get paid you have to sit and submit verification so all of us who are providers are also verified right um and so all those so 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 all the content that's being posted on there and being sold is from verified users which means that OnlyFans was indeed taking an extra step by saying that they wouldn't even allow they would not allow anybody to do it. And here's I actually took a screenshot of their let me see if I have the before after here. Um let's see acceptable use policy, some use policy, hold on. Um let me see. Here we go. So here's what it says. Do not upload, post, display, or publish content only fans that, and by the way, this came out well after the announcement that they were going to be cutting off uh, uh, any kind of explicit, explicit, sexually explicit content. Um, so everybody was just wondering, like, what the fuck are the rules? Like, what are they? I, was like, I, I knew. I was like, I'm fine. I'm sure I'm fine, right? Because I'm just, besides that video that Draven just bought, like, I'm pretty much fine. So let's see. It says, uh, it says, uh, shows, promotes, advertise, or refers to sexually explicit conduct, which means actual or simulated sexual intercourse including genital to genital uh oral to genital anal to genital uh oral to anal between persons of any sex actual or simulated masturbation see told you helicopter sounds okay though uh any exhibition of the anus or genitals of any person which is extreme or offensive any exhibition of the anus or genitals of any person extreme or offensive what is what is extreme what if what if somebody likes to you know, slap their penis around. Uh, see, actual or simulated material depicting bodily fluids commonly secreted during sexual conduct. No ski ski. Okay? No ski ski. What if I use a cucumber? I mean, is it a small cucumber? It's probably fine. It's not extreme. Right? If it's a bigger cucumber, that'll be a problem. 
Very subjective. Very subjective. Um, no holding anus open, basically. Yeah, no gaping. <laughs> no gaping, guys. Okay. <laughs> so, I follow a couple of of sex workers who, um, and just to give an idea of what kind of work, like this one, Mary Moody, right? She's basically, she's an OnlyFans provider. She has a Chatterbait channel and she streams on there. Uh, and um, initially I followed her because I thought she was local. So I thought I could probably work with her. And then I, just, I kept the, um, uh, actually, I still don't know where she lives, which is, makes perfect sense. Why would she let anybody know? Uh, but she's been quite the activist when it comes to this stuff. So I've known that this stuff was coming for a while. I just didn't think it was actually going to happen. Right? I just figured, ah, some, it'll find some way to work itself out. Um, but she has been basically my one of my main feeds of information on this. And you could see, you know, where, where the influence comes from. MasterCard didn't just necessarily decide that it was going to stop supporting this because they're making money they're influenced by somebody and it turns out some of the people uh, the people that are influencing are um one of them is this group called uh, uh exodus cry and so this is this is the what is she's like the founder of trafficking hub uh movement so it's the founder of trafficking hub which is part of exodus cry we're gonna get into that in a second um and she is she is somebody who has basically dedicated her life to uh or her whatever to uh uh stamping out porn in all forms on the internet and she says while we are talking about only fans everyone should know that twitter is also distributing illegal pornography there is child sexual abuse rape and trafficking and all these sites because they don't verify age consent for porn uploads so she's she's already she's already like i got only fans she already got Pornhub, and now she's like let's go after twitter So I went to their site. I want to learn a little more about them, right? Went to the site. This is like Exodus Cry. Toxic porn, criminal porn. Our world is immersed in a sea of pornographic imagery and an insane amount of it is either toxic or criminal. Criminal, sure. Yeah, let's go after the criminal stuff. What is toxic? What is toxic? So here we go. It says the crime of filmed rape and non-consexual acts. Sure. What is it that we're calling for? To prevent videos of child sexual abuse, rape, trafficking, revenge porn, and all other image-based abuse, all porn creators and sites must be required to verify both age, the age and consent of every person in a pornographic video or image. Sites cannot be trusted to self-police, so this should be done using third-party software. Doesn't that sound familiar? It's like exactly what MasterCard said. Boy, those rules. <laughs> so we go to number two. It says, uh, it says the toxin of child exposures more than any time in history. Children are, aren't just being exposed to hardcore pornographic content. They're being raised on it. <laughs> because of how porn rewires a child's brain, this is profoundly shaping their sexual templates. <laughs> Currently, most online hosts of pornographic content do not require age verification to access those images. Kids online can unwittingly and inadvertently find themselves down a rabbit hole of everything from videos of gang rape to torture porn to content that promotes incest, all within a few clicks. This isn't hidden in the deep web. Mainstream sites are infested with it, and now pornography depicting malevolent sex acts has become sex ad for children. I don't know about you, man. I've gone down some rabbit holes. I've never just, like, stumbled across actual fucking gang rape. Or or, or, or torture porn. I mean, some people are into that shit, man. Come on, kink.com. Come on. Uh, so, so what we're calling for, it says, to prevent child exposure to pornography, all sites that host porn must require site users to prove their age with a government-issued ID before they can access adult contents. Before you can access it. Everyone, nudity is bad. By the way, I took my five-year-old to see Suicide Squad, Suicide Squad last night. It was great. That's the mindset. That's the mindset. Number three. The toxin of promoting abuse. The professional adult industry is littered with scenes that promote the fantasy of sex with children, rape, and extreme violence, most directed against women and children. This content normalizes abusive acts and inspires its viewers to commit these crimes in real life. Boy, it's really hard to disagree with this one. What are they calling for? It says, to prevent the distribution of content that promotes the fantasy of sex with children, incest, violence, and racism, this kind of porn must be banned. Great. Yeah. <laughs> Fuck, I'm over the step bro shit. I'm really over the step bro shit. We could stop that at any time. I was over when it started. <laughs> okay? So yeah, I agree. Number three. 
But step, bro. Fuck. So, further, uh, Exodus Cry will link you to uh, will link you to this site that they're they're associated with. It says Trafficking Hub, which we saw uh, from our friend Layla Micklewait. Says Trafficking Hub campaign is a non-religious, non-partisan effort to hold the largest porn website in the world accountable for enabling and profiting off of mass sex trafficking and exploitation of women and minors. So they're non-religious, non-religious. But the fucking sister company here, if I go to, let me see, uh, the problem, our solution, see, reaching out, film, get involved, let me see, where is the, uh, God, can I get to it from here, this fucking site, about, oh, uh, God, oh, man, no, I can't find it now. There's pl plenty of stats here, though, if you're interested. Um, does she own the third-party software? It's about, yeah, oh, it's, it's definitely about religion. Let me see. Yes, join the movement. Here we go. Six ways to get involved. Trafficking hub. Join the fight to shut down. So there we go. There, 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 there they are. Um, and then let me see over here. Get involved for your church. For your church. Become an abolition church. There you go. Yeah. Just non-religious. Non-religious. We also do support religious approaches to getting rid of pornography and all these dirty Jezebels. It's not, it's not, it's not partisan. Not at not at all religious. Just full abolition. Yeah, just, just there we go. Then I went to the other site that's associated with lobbying Mastercard to to cancel uh, to to give shit to all these uh, uh, content providers, adult content providers. And so it's, uh, it's N C O S E, the National Center on Sexual Exploitation. Uh, is a leading organization exposing the links between all forms of sexual abuse and exploitation. And so I watched their video. It's eight minutes long. We're not going to watch the whole thing. I'm going to skip around and see if we can find some good parts here. The demand for and sexual trafficking. And this became very the focus of this organization. Recognizing that issues like sex trafficking, military sexual assault, pornography, prostitution, and more do not occur in a vacuum. We're targeting pornography. We're targeting child sex abuse, prostitution, and sex trafficking because the continuum of sexual exploitation flows through all of those. Once we understand these connections and we understand the role pornography plays in a vast number and forms of sexual exploitation, we can begin to dismantle. They're talking about all pornography. You caught that, right? They're not just, they're not just talking. They mentioned some stuff that I'm down. It's like, yeah, child, yeah, fuck, yeah, get, yeah. I absolutely, get rid of it. Okay, child exploitation, yes, please, fucking God, right? But they always mention also pornography, just in general. Look at the fucking face. This interconnected web of sexual exploitation. My plea to you today is that we stop addressing these issues as if they are separate problems. America is suffering from systemic sexual exploitation. Evidence support. She's like literally wearing an outfit from fucking Handmaid's Tale, except for it's blue and not green. Like you can't, you can't make this shit up. <sighs> so yes, they are, they are in it to <laughs> eradicate all pornography. Period. Has nothing to do. Has nothing to do with, with, uh, uh, with, with being partisan or religion or anything like that. They just want to get rid of porn. And I love this comment here. It says, the, the, the evangelical women trying to make OnlyFans disappear don't realize if I lose that income, I'll start fucking their husbands for money again. Is this uh, some American stuff that I am too European to understand? Well, it's porn. Um, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> you guys got that out there? <laughs> Whatever sex positions are considered acceptable by them. Oh, missionary only. And only if only if you're attempted to reproduce. And that's it. That's it. Look, some of the stuff they are trying to stop is absolutely absolutely stuff that needs to be stopped. We can all agree child exploitation shit. Yeah, but all porn does not tie to this. Exactly. Their perspective is that all porn is interconnected, even if it is not ex like porn that exploits uh, uh, incest or depicts fantasies of incest or rape and all that stuff. Like they just think that all pornography is bad. Um, see, America is suffering from a systemic exploitation of glorifying gun violence. We got to remove all gun violence for every form of media. Yeah, where the fuck? <laughs> Where's that at? 
<laughs> Somebody has to help all these st stuck step stepsisters. <laughs> Who think of the stuck stepsisters? Come on, somebody. So here's a good article from uh, the Daily Beast of all. It says the real reasons why OnlyFans is banning porn, and they go into detail down here. It just says it says these controls, the controls uh, that come from uh, Mastercard. It says documented age and identity, identity verification for all people depicted in those uploading content. Content review process prior to publication, which is impossible. That's absolutely impossible. There's no, there's no fucking way. There's no way. It says uh, content review. So it says a compliant a complaint resolution process that addresses legal or consensual content within seven business days. That makes sense. Uh, appeals uh, process allowing for any person depicted to request their content to be removed. Also makes sense. Also makes sense. Um, there's yeah. There's 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 legalese in there too that that needs to be taken into consideration. Like for example. Uh, uh, as a photographer, I have paperwork basically saying that I own those pictures, right? So I legally can upload those pictures to any site that I want. That's my that's my right. I have the I I I pay the model. She signed the paperwork. That's my it's mine. I have the paperwork, the legal stuff, all this stuff. Good. Um, however, she could reach out to the site and say, "Take down my pictures," and they would have to then. Uh, go into like a one-on-one -on -one with with us and say, okay, there's a paperwork, there's all this stuff, whatever. And then even with paperwork, they'll probably take it down anyways. So, because they have to err on the side of, what if this person was exploited, right? And I can't be mad about that because there are situations where that's the case. Situations where a model comes back later and says, please remove my stuff from these websites, basically never happens. I... I I don't want to say never happens because it's happened to me, but it basically never happens. Uh, I said, remember that one that said, I don't want to upload, uh, you to upload this stuff even though you signed paper. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know you're, I know, I know. It's happened to me. It's happened to me. I'm about to flex my fucking legal right though. Uh, <laughs> following the OnlyFans announcement, uh, NCOC did a victory lap, releasing a statement saying the announcement made by OnlyFans that it will prohibit creators from posting material with sexually explicit conduct on its website comes after much advocacy from NCOSE, survivors, and allies. It says, you see, Exodus Cry and NCOC have targeted these sites claiming that they're hotbeds of child sexual abuse when, according to an independent study released earlier this year by the National Center for Missing and Exploited Child Children, the actual center, you've heard this name before if you live in the States, MindGeek, uh, the parent company of Pornhub, which also runs RedTube, YouPorn, and several other adult tube sites, accounted for 13,229 instances in which they deemed child sexual abuse material, while Snapchat had 144,095 instances, Google had 546,704, and Facebook topped everybody with 20.3 million. But you don't see them going after Facebook. You don't see them going... No. No. Matter of fact, that dumb bitch on fucking Twitter, she said she's going to go after Twitter next. What the fuck? What about Facebook? What about fucking Facebook? Say Snapchat having children porn on? I'm shocked. Oh, God, I know. And it says here, it says OnlyFans recently released its first transparency report for the month of July and claimed to have deactivated a total of 15 accounts for alleged child sexual abuse material. So that's a very, very low number. And it's probably because OnlyFans verifies all, the con all of the uh, users who provide content to their sites. So they're able to they're able to uh, escape by with only a handful of actual uh, deactivations. Meanwhile, again, 20.3 million for Facebook. Old Zuckerberg just collecting it up, boy. He's got a whole stash. He's got a whole stash of child pornography at work. <sighs> but it's cool. So it says, it says three weeks after the Daily Beast published the open letter to MasterCard on June 30th, MasterCard ex executives met with the Performer Union on the uh, Union, the Adult uh, Performance Actors Artists Guild (APAG) uh, to discuss concerns that platforms like OnlyFans could remove would remove content due to MasterCard's own policy changes take effect on October 15th. During that meeting, MasterCard stated it had no intention of having legal adult content removed from its clients' platforms. We reached out to MasterCard for its only res for its response to OnlyFans announcement, and then obviously to apply. So there it is again, right? MasterCard said, no one damn no intention of legal porn. Yeah, you just have to jump through so many fucking hoops that it's like not even it's not even profitable anymore. Mm, yeah. Technically, it's not really it's not really not really profitable anymore. So OnlyFans ends up reversing its decision. It says, thank you for everyone for making your voices heard. We have secured assurances necessary to support our diverse creator community and have suspended the uh, the plan October 1 policy change. OnlyFans stands for inclusion and we will continue to provide a home for all creators. So this is uh, a week later. There's one week of just chaos. 
right? Everybody's looking for different sites to get involved with. I've saw I got spreadsheets that like some of the some of the um, providers were um, or sex workers were putting together that like rated and and uh, uh, reviewed every site that's like popped out of nowhere. Oh, OnlyFans is going down, huh? Well, you know, over here at Fansly, over here at Peach, over here at Many Vids, over here at other sites just for fans, <laughs> over here at whatever, they're just like, oh, tell me a bit more about this. Sign on up. <laughs> Everybody was jumping in on it. So now, so now, <laughs> fans for you a lot of people open a fansly that's right i actually also i'm going through the process of opening a fansly just in case because because you can't trust them you can't trust them now it says excuse me it says uh that they are suspending it's suspended hmm now you know i could read i could read good i know that suspended it's not the same. It's not the same as saying that you're not going to do it. It's just saying you wait to do it. You're going to maybe do it later. This guy reads. That's right. Read good. So now, as somebody who follows a lot of uh, uh, a lot of uh, content producers on uh, content creators on OnlyFans, I can tell you that a lot of them are like. Well, I guess we'll continue going here. However, I do have a fansly. You could sign up there as well because they don't trust them. And that makes perfect sense. Why would they trust them? Why would they even trust them? Um, <laughs> yeah, we're on the same page. Uh, one thing I found, I found that was pretty, like, in terms of, like, the spreading of information, right? So now, uh, because this was such a, this was such a huge thing, and we're talking a uh, thousand retweets, thirty one hundred and fifty one quoted tweets. Uh, like that's, that's that's a good amount of like spread just for one article. There's tons and tons and tons of tweets. It was trending for days. Okay, it's tons and tons and tons. Um, and then the reversal art, the reversal article also from Bloomberg has forty seven retweets, sixteen quote retweets, eighty three likes. So now. You have a huge amount of people who are already thinking, are still thinking that OnlyFans is gonna be is not gonna be providing porn, and so they are probably not gonna jump on OnlyFans if they're gonna look for something. They'll go to some other site because they'll assume because they didn't get the word, they didn't get the word, right? They didn't get the word, so they just, they're they still going about their lives just like, oh yeah, well OnlyFans is going to end, so I guess I'll go wherever. If she's on another site, I'll go find her on this other site. And that's it. So OnlyFans really fucked up here. You know? Mostly fans. <laughs> Some fans. <laughs> so OnlyFans really fucked up because now none of their content creators trust them. Their fans, most of them, still think that they're closing down they're getting rid of all pornography um and so they're gonna have to i don't know suspend that for indefinitely and just never bring it back and help rebuild that trust or i mean shit if they take a hit hard enough it starts tapering hard enough and a site like you know uh just for fans or fansly ends up becoming the new main well then that's probably when they'll go ahead and take their uh, uh take make their switch but what we're seeing is a credit card company that is deciding what is uh, ethical, right? What ethical content is. Your credit card company is <laughs> going to decide what kind of pornography you can watch. What kind of pornography you can buy. MasterCard. That's yeah, that's the scary part exactly. When a when a payment provider or processor can flex like that to that degree. Bitch, they already know what I've had to. Yeah, but now they don't want now they're not gonna let you pay for it. They're gonna find some, and, and by not letting you pay for it, the business becomes moot. It's not gonna be making money. And so it's gonna disappear, and that kind of content's gonna go. And then 
Just like now, it's like, oh man, remember when Pornhub had like everything, and now Pornhub has like nothing. Uh, it's gonna be like only. Remember, only fans used to have. Like, remember Tumblr? Remember Tumblr used to have tons of porn on it, and now it has nothing. Almost literally nothing. It's a crypto. Yes, crypto. That's what needs. That's what needs to happen. We need more crypto uh, 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 cryptocurrency support. There are some things money can't buy. For everything else, there's MasterCard. I guess porn is one of those things you can't buy. Yes, exactly. There are some things money can't buy. There are some things MasterCard won't let you buy. Isn't that fucking crazy? <laughs> so. A very turbulent week for, for people on people on OnlyFans. And just sex workers in general. It's a lot of money that was about to disappear. And at the same time... Uh, there's all this other i almost feel like it's a coordinated attack to try to get people back to work like the united states uh the government's trying really hard to to uh to find different ways different avenues to try to like cut off oh they're making money on only fans let's find a way to regulate it right let's not to me not say the government but like they're trying to get people they can't yeah they can just go work at mcdonald's exactly they're trying to get people to uh to go back to their their shitty seven dollars and fifty cents an hour job where they're fucking sweating all day over a fryer while somebody yells at them because their french fries didn't have salt in it. So, yeah. Fuck. Fuck that. Like, if if you want to if you want to touch your wee-wee on fucking OnlyFans and get paid for it, you should be allowed to do that. Especially if it, you know, if it earns you an income, you can live off of it. Absolutely. <clears throat> Just back to work for us. Exactly. You can't make your own money. You have to make my money. That's right, Rhoda. That's right. That's great. Perfect. <sighs> ha! My favorite Chinese joint is struggling to stay open because they're short so many employees. I blame only fans. Exactly. Yeah, hiring is fucked right now. I, I actually had a discussion uh, several months back with somebody uh, who worked in the hotel business. He was like, man, it's really hard to hire people. And Jen and I... He, we had a great conversation with this guy, so we didn't want to like we weren't trying to like be confrontational or anything. Like that, but Jen and I gave each other a look because we knew exactly why. Because they don't pay. They don't pay. We're in, we're in fucking California. We're like, if you make less than six figures, you are literally fucking poor. You're homeless. Okay, you're living in an RV outside of the Tesla factory, making eighty thousand dollars a year. Okay, like that's that's the way it is here. And you expect you expect people to go and fucking serve you know be waitress and waiters and shit like that making less than minimum wage because they make tips so they have to work for fucking tips get the fuck out of here yeah see only fans jobs 15,000 a month mcdonald's 0.4k a month which should i choose exactly no true story like i i convinced a model i work with i was like you should join only fans because you have a great following and you're on these dumb sites that are not only fans and so she was like well i don't know if i should do it da, 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 da. And then finally, she did. And she made $8,000 fucking dollars her first month. Okay? So, <laughs> can't have them making their own money. Exactly, Rhoda. You gotta make my money. Jesus. There's only two types of people who live in Cali the rich and the homeless. Yeah, there's not a whole lot of in between. Well, there is. I'm, I'm, I'm part of the in-between. <laughs> but there's still... But you're right, though. It's, it's, it is pretty much... It is like that. It do be like that. So if you guys remember, last uh, last episode and, and this past month, um, Mike is rich. You know what? By by my, my own standards growing up, I am rich. By my standards growing up, you know, when... When like we lived, uh, we lived in an apartment where like you could see outside underneath the door because it was all rotted out underneath. Uh, where my bike would get fucking stolen every time I get a bike, which was like three times growing up. And then there's a fucking no more bikes for this kid. <laughs> where we had a black and white TV as one of the main TVs in the house, and we had two. Yeah. So for me right now, yes, yeah. To my kid self, I'm fucking rich. But my kid self doesn't understand how these bills work. <laughs> so for the past month, Blizzard has been under the uh, under the microscope. The past month and a half, uh, has been under the microscope for sexual harassment accusations, investigations that came uh, from the Department of Fair Employee and House and Housing, the DFA, the DFA. Um, 
and uh, that's obviously put a bunch of it's a, it's just a lot of scrutiny, right? We've had a lot of stuff happen in the past week. I'm not gonna go over all of it. Uh, I do want to say just to pick up exactly where we uh, where we started last time we talked about this. Um, what does he say? My bank account has a comma compared to any other time in my life. I am rich. That said, I'm still under the poverty line. Yeah, no, no, it's just true. I, I, I have a comma. I have a comma, but it doesn't start with a two, unfortunately. <laughs> and what is it? It's almost payday, so it'll be gone. Um, so this is the this is the uh, the filing that they had last time, and this obviously spurred a lot. Like this, this, this spurred a ton of of. Um, of, of, of just discussion and just uh, accusations and information. We learned that some of the people that we thought were, uh, were, were, you know, we're pretty cool guys. We're not, we're not. So this is still going on. Update. California expands lawsuit against Activision Blizzard. Thanks for this link, by the way, Draven. I had another link. This is a good one. So, California, it says right here, it says California has expanded its anti-discrimination lawsuit against Black Division Blizzard, adding temporary workers to the female full-time employees of whom it is suing on behalf. So it's basically adding contractors and such. Uh, the state's Department of Fair Employment and Housing also alleges the game maker has interfered with its investigation. So it says uh, why, why, why it matters. Is while Activision Blizzard has attempted to show over the past month that it is addressing issues raised in the suit, the DFA has turned is turning up the heat so it says here the suit claims that this oh here we go the defa also says that activision blizzard has stymied its efforts through ndas requiring employees to speak with the company ahead of contacting the defa and its involvement with wilmer hale a law firm the game maker said will investigate misconduct issues so the suit claims that this directly interferes with the DFA's ability to investigate, prosecute, and remedy workplace discrimination and harassment violations on behalf of employees and contingent or temporary workers. Because they are saying that because these employees are under NDA, they can't go to DFA to talk about sexual harassment in the workplace. And so Blizzard, even though they're saying they're working hard, they're listening and doing whatever the fuck they say they're going to, they're not. They're kind of not. It says it alleges in part that documents related to investigations and complaints were shredded by human resource personnel in violation of what it asserts is the game com game company's legal obligation to retain them pending the investigation. They fucking shredded it. <laughs> They're shredding the shit. So Blizzard says. Uh, they complied with every proper request in support of its review, even as they have been implementing reforms to ensure a workplace are welcoming and safe for every employee. Reforms, reforms including shredding documents, Watergate, yeah, Blizzard Gates. With regards to claims that we have destroyed information by shredding documents, those claims are not true. We took the appropriate steps to preserve information relevant to the DFA investigation. You know, I don't think that uh, the department... <laughs> A, an actual government uh, agency would be going out of its way to, to crush a video game uh, 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 developer that's employing thousands of people and bringing millions of dollars in tax revenue to the state. It's probably not in their best interest. Everything they're doing, if they were uh, less than ethical, would be against their best interests as a state entity. Okay. As a government entity. But Blizzard's treating it like, oh, they're after us. I can't believe they would target us. Why would they do it? There's no reason. There's no fucking reason. <laughs> but gaslight your way out of it. Exactly. Dear Blizzard, you are you aren't uh, not you're not so important. You're, you are not so important that uh, you would be targeted for this. Exactly. Yeah. 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 People are like, oh, they're gonna, they're gonna put trackers in my fucking vaccine. Why? Who the fuck are you? No one gives a shit. You dumbass memes you post on Facebook. The shit you talk about in your garage. No one cares. No one fucking cares. <laughs> Meanwhile, they're like, they're walking around with this thing all the time. <laughs> they're just like, oh, I don't want a government tracker on me. Let me find friends. My wife, she, she's at. <laughs> the fuck out of here. Man. <laughs> I got my vaccine last night. My Wi-Fi has never been better. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. Mine has been mine's been better actually. No, no, be honest. <sighs> Snap maps. I know. Paranoid conspiracies typed into Twitter on their phone. Fuck. 
that's what they're going for. So Blizzard, Blizzard is uh, is 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 definitely writing some kind of line uh, where they are, you know, they're under scrutiny the, by the DFA. DFA is expanding their lawsuit and to include people who are not necessarily just employees, which is going to add probably a ton of people. Um, <laughs> Uh, God damn. And then, and then, because of some of the people that were named in the lawsuit, uh, we also got a notice here from the Overwatch team. And the Overwatch team says, we... We built the Overwatch universe around the idea that inclusivity, inclusivity, equity, and hope are the building blocks of a better future. They are essential to the game and to the Overwatch team. And so it says, and it says, we believe it's necessary to change the name of the hero currently known as McCree to something that better represents what Overwatch stands for. Who is McCree? Jesse McCree is one of the individuals named who was uh, uh, accused of being a um, sexual predator sexual harassing or something right uh and so because of that they're saying they're going to change the name uh from mccree so it says it says uh, we realize any change is such a well-loved and central hero in the game's fiction will take time to roll out correctly and we'll share updates as this work progresses in the near term we had planned to kick off a narrative arc in september supporting them with supported with new story and game content of which mccree was was a key part and since we want to integrate this change into that story arc we will be delaying the new arc until later this year and instead launch a new free-for-all map this september so it says, going forward, in-game characters will no longer be named after real employees, and we <laughs> will be more thoughtful and discerning about adding real-world references and future Overwatch content. Uh, Cowboy Mercer. No, you can't, because what if Mercer, you don't, what if Mercer, what if, what, you don't know, right? I mean, Matt Mercer's amazing, okay? We all thought everybody at Blizzard was amazing, okay? So, like, we can't do it. <laughs> So they are going to come up with some way to uh, uh, to justify a name change for McCree. Now, there is dialogue between I think uh, uh, what uh, Black Widow or whatever Widow, Black Widow, fuck, uh, and uh, and McCree, where she says something about him, not Widowmaker. Thank you, uh, Widowmaker, um, and him. She says something about his name. Not being his real name or something like that. Yeah, sorry, Black Widow. Uh, uh, so there's there's at least precedent there that they can make this change. No matter what they do, it's gonna be fucking cringe. It's I mean, they have to get they have to get out of this somehow. They can't just let the name stay. You would think they could, right? You would think they could, but you know they can't. Like part of me is like, just let the name stay. It's fucking just let the name stay. But. You gotta change it. <laughs> you gotta change it. Um, what are you? What are you? Just as a just 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 Sarah of Macquarie Macquarie. What are these things? What are these things? What are you? This better be good. Cowboy McShooty. There you go. That's a safe name. That's a safe name. What is? Oh, it is just another name. Yeah, just just Sarah of Macquarie. Yeah. See, so like this name's gotta change. Things got to change. It's literally the NBC NATO Justin McCree. Man, this guy's got so many things named after him. Jesus. He must be a nice guy. <laughs> must be a swell, must be a swell dude. <laughs> uh, Fred. Yeah, give him a fucking stupid name. Fred. Fred McShooty Pants. Yes. That's a good one. That's a real good one. Change that name. Let's call him John Smith. Just call everybody John Smith. Just John's Jane Smith, the third, junior, senior, esquire, whatever. You can't fuck that up. Somebody will find a John Smith has been convicted of something, though. <laughs> Just start adding apostrophes and shit. Just make some shit up. <laughs> no, John Smith is bad. Bad historical connotation. That's right. It's related to M Mormonism. And the Mormons are... They believe in magical panties. We can't do this. We can't have that. We can't have that kind of influence in our fucking games. <sighs> so stupid. Name him Guy. 
No, because then Guy Fieri, he's like, oh, this guy's too nice. We can't, no, can't do that. Can't do that. You can't, you can't tarnish that name. There's only one, there's only one guy. All right, so. Lately, there's been a phenomenon called hate raids. Something that took me a while to come around to. Thankfully, I have people that I follow that retweet things that are outside of my immediate circle of influence uh, or circle of information so I get to see some of this stuff. If it wasn't for these people, I would have no idea what the fuck a hate raid was. And it's probably because I'm white. So <laughs> or because of the shirts I wear. One of the two. Uh, a hate raid is basically uh, almost like a kind of like a DDoS uh, of your chat where somebody will write a script that lets you write make a fuck million accounts and it's super easy by the way because they only check they only check if you're a human one time when you make an account so that's fun um and then they will go so you can see the d um and then they will spam chats with uh usually of people who are uh minorities people of personal color uh or uh person persons with whatever sexual orientation right there's usually they'll go after uh, uh people who they feel are easy targets racist racist sexist uh any whatever whatever it's kind of bot spam exactly uh that's why you see so many sub only chats so i i i they actually had on wednesday like a lockout where they where they wanted everybody to not stream uh on wednesday and it wasn't i don't know how effective it was i streamed on wednesday uh i don't know how effective it was overall uh we'll talk a little bit about the effectiveness of some of these protests and why they probably will fall on deaf deaf ears but i want to show you guys this is a, here's a video it's a handheld video of course but it's from a streamer who was getting hate rated uh and she's uh showing us you know actually blows up so you can see it Y'all, this is how many bots are getting banned right now by Hackbolt doing literally the Lord's work in Pleasantly Twisted's chat. Um, Look at that. All bans. This has been going on for two hours and 12 minutes as of my recording. All of these bans in her chat. This is obscene and ridiculous. Even with temp mods, we couldn't keep up. So this is what we're ha having to deal with. On so yeah, it's it's a it's a lot. Like it's it's not it's not just you know somebody comes in and says, "Hey, do you want to be famous? Go to this website. You could you could uh, download some viewers." <laughs> it's not like that at all. <laughs> That's no. That was a, that was a bot. That was like a a a, a, a moo bot or a night bot or something like that. Hack bot or whatever. So it says, after experiencing my first hate raid, I'm absolutely fearful for new slash inexperienced streamers who have no idea how to handle something like this. It's absolutely unacceptable that Twitch has yet to do anything besides their PR tweet of, we hear you, which is just pretty common. Um, so he says, so uh, he, he goes through, he actually has some, some screenshots here. You can see what they're doing. Like they're, they're doing what they can to bypass a filter. And so you can read this, right? You can read that. Uh, here's a video showing how impossible it is to censor these words. There you go. Streamers on Twitch are routinely told they should use the tools Twitch provides to protect themselves from harassment, such as adding offensive terms to a channel's blocked words list to prevent the words from being used in chat. Let's see how realistic this is. Let's say I want to block the word jogger in my channel. Harassers on Twitch often circumvent blocked words lists by swapping out characters in their chat messages for characters from other languages that are still easily recognizable. So in addition to banning the word jogger, I need to ban as many variations of that word as possible using non-English characters. What you see on your screen right now is a script I wrote to generate all the variations on the word jogger that can be created using Latin characters that resemble the English letters J, O, G, E, and R. It generated 21.9 million variations of the word jogger. This was just using the Latin characters. The UTF-8 standard that is used for Twitch chat also supports Cyrillic, Greek, Hebrew, and Arabic alphabets as well as many others. Then there is the matter of actually getting these terms blocked on a Twitch channel. Since the website doesn't have an option to upload block terms and mass, 
The only alternative is to set up my channel bot to block these terms. To prevent spamming, Twitch limits the number of messages a bot can send to a server to 100 messages every 30 seconds. So in order to block 21.9 million words, my channel bot will need to run 24 hours a day, 7 days a week, for 76 days. To block one word. Expecting streamers to manage this problem themselves is not only unfair, it's not technologically possible. Yep. Do better, Twitch. Do better. <laughs> Do better, Twitch. <laughs> He's right, though. He's right. And like, like, yeah, like I see it said, just use the tools. Exactly. Exactly. So as you can see, 21.942 million variations of the word jogger. And like he said, it doesn't even, it doesn't even include Cyril or Cyrillic or whatever. He said it looks like cursive. So it looks kind of like this, basically. Yeah, it's, it's almost impossible. It's almost in fucking base. It is impossible. It is impossible. With the with the with the uh, current tool, yeah, Skrillex, 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 <laughs> fuck. <laughs> it was only Latin. That's right. I hate it when somebody says things are simply possible. Nothing's possible. Just improbable. Yeah. Well, it's it's basically impossible. It also doesn't uh, uh, include typos like jogger. Oh yeah, yeah, huh? What can Twitch possibly do though? Uh, can we give them some kind of help feedback instead of just doing the do better Twitch? Sure. I'm glad you asked. Check this out. If you go to twitch.tv slash or twitch.uservoice.com, you can actually vote. You can log right in. You can log right in with your Twitch account. It's so easy. So easy. I'm actually going to give you the link right now. All you got to do is log in and then you just click on the vote button. Bam. It says right here, limit participation in chat based on account creation date not that hard sure they could probably make accounts and then wait a few days for it or whatever but at the very least this will help resolve a lot of them that's a pretty simple one it says currently it's easy for users to create a temporary email and twitch accounts and harass live streaming a use uh, account under the guise of anonymity because they just spam it basically um can we get Jessica's last name as <laughs> yeah, I said you know what resolves all of them? Sub only mode. But no, but that's no, we that's that's not that's not a solution for this. Right? A solution for this does not include not uh, allowing people who are new to your channel to be able to participate. Right? So we need a solution that allows uh you know people who have a legit accounts. And this could be as simple as just saying one day. I would say, yeah. They have to be have at least uh, at least a day old, in order to in order to participate, uh, in chat. So, see both accounts uh, will then be like fine wines, more annoying with age. <laughs> Pot accounts. Well, sorry. <laughs> the day off Twitch is for September first. Really? God damn it! The day keeps changing. <clears throat> well, I, I think I might be camping that day. So, um. So, see, I heard this bot spam is so easy because of IRC. Well, it's just, it's, I actually had another video that I can't find right now, but, uh, where they, um, they show that once you create one account and it verifies that you're a human, you can continue to create more accounts. Um, and, and then it, without having to be verified anything. So, oh, good. I see some of you got like 13 of you guys fucking did it. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah. Something like this. I mean, I feel like this is simple. Um, I, mean, I feel like it's simple, right? Yeah, just code it in. It's super easy. I did my part and voted. Good, good, good to hear. Hopefully some of you two folks hop on that too. The link will be down, down below. It's a simple change. It, it, it affects nobody. None of you guys will be impacted by it, but you would be helping creators. But here's the reason why a lot of these types of changes, we feel like you're pulling teeth in order to get Twitch to do anything other than to come out and say, we hear you, we're listening, et cetera, et cetera. Um, the people who, like us, right? Small, medium streamers. Uh, we make up like 12% of the overall uh, content, streaming, viewership, all that stuff, right? Uh, our, our average viewership our average small to medium streamers average viewership is five 
five users, five viewers, right? These are the people that are being impacted by this. But when your grand total is 12% of traffic, because only a handful, like 20 people make up the, up the other 80 something percent, things are probably not going to be done unless it affects them. Now, I haven't seen anybody, any of these bigger streamers say anything about hate raids where they wanted something, Blizzard to do something, nothing. Right? They're in the business of making money. They're in cahoots with Twitch to continue doing that. They don't want to rock that boat. It doesn't affect them because their Twitch chat moves so fast, they probably wouldn't notice it anyways. So the, why even bother? So why would Twitch bother? 88% uh, of your revenue is totally secure. Why bother doing anything to support the 12%? <clears throat> they say, uh, unless you're on the front page of Twitch without scrolling, you aren't hurt or matter. I saw Asma declining the protest because nobody of the big streams wanted to join in. Yeah, see? Okay, wow. <laughs> that says a lot. It does a lot. The kind is too long to include in the show, but I do recommend two videos of Devin Nash the day off Twitch and protests on Twitch. There's some good talking points in there. Oh, good. Good, good, good. You don't have 10k viewers. Fuck you is Twitch reaction, basically. Stop calling out XQC. <laughs> did, I, did I, did I, without saying his name, did I? <laughs> so, um, there, there was, uh, there's a tweet that actually got, I got some, uh, uh, got some circulation amongst my circle of friends. Um, where as she says, uh, check again from veteran streamers who've been getting, who've been with the site since launch, new streamers just getting started, viewers, moderators, and everyone in between. How do you feel about the current state of Twitch? And I'm a creator. I've been here. I've been here since the beginning, right? Justin TV, 2010. Um, <clears throat> and I mean, the company has grown quite a bit. The company has grown quite a bit, and it's uh, it's way different than it was before. Less personable, of course. Uh, I could see that, you know, from like you know, Lulaboo, uh, Lula. She says it's been around since 2011. It's less personable, more money driven. Not really feeling like the company cares so much about you unless you're mainstream famous and pulling in big dollars. Reactive instead of proactive. It's very, very true. Co Carnage got a few hours. <laughs> Twitch has gone through many phases in the last eight years. I've been on it. Some things are better, some things are not. Given the situation, pretty much inevitable to see where we were uh where we were to where we are uh from passion to business the national progression of success yep true um what do you guys think you guys some of you guys have been viewers for a whole 10 years like what do you guys think about the currency i'm sure it's probably not going to be favorable right um what is this uh co-carnage the guy who is on the twitch safety council and says he is not going to do anything for change for changes uh, wait, did he say? Did he say that? I mean, he's if he's on the Twitch Safety Council, and I actually heard I think from him, he said that they don't really do anything. Um, <laughs> so I have a feeling that they just you know don't really do anything. Um, <laughs> he said that way back at the start. Oh yeah, yeah. Well, I don't know if that Twitch Safety Council is even a thing anymore. Otherwise, they should be all over this, all over this hate raids thing. I mean, I fucking know about it, right? Why don't they know about it? Um, well, I wouldn't know about any of these problems without you saying something about it. And that's, you know, that's a good point. You know, that's a good point. Like, that's, there's a lot of people who just, like, you don't know any of it because you only tune into one streamer or a couple streamers, and they're not impacted by some of these things. That's why we do the news. That's why we do the news. You can stay informed. So we can all stay mad together. <laughs> And so he reads some of these. Uh, it says, I've been around uh, stream since uh, since late Justin TV and Gay Breaker days, but Twitch has definitely become more corporal than uh, than passionate. Yeah, cor yeah, it's true. Uh, Miss Justin.tv, I used to watch a bunch of JP dudes uh, uh, play MMOs and JP. Like McDaniels? What? <laughs> Japanese dudes play MMOs and stuff on there. Uh, it's just a title. It means nothing. Yes. The Safety Council was disbanded after one week. I believe that. Uh, I'm sure that's true. Yeah. Uh, the council had no power anyways. Yep. See, that's how, I, that's how I get my news from me. Yeah. After all this time, I feel Twitch cares less and less, but then I'm not a creator. I tune in so Mike can tell me how bad, how mad to be. Well, I have some good news. I do have some good news. I have some good news. Um, contrary, contrary to, to popular belief, Atari, Atari is not owned by Soldier Boy. I don't know how this got started. I don't know where this came from. I don't know why. I don't have my fucking U loaded up in here. Okay? Did somebody ask? Did somebody ask? Soldier Boy said it on Insta? Maybe? Maybe? No, you! I know you! I don't know. No. Unsa, what's one of these? Bruh. Ah. Oh my god.
Yeah. Yes, oh, Milo. Oh, shit, it's Randy. I don't remember what that one's from. <clears throat> so Soldier Boy does not own Atari. All right, just just get that out of your brains. All right, get that out of your brains. <laughs> For whatever reason. <laughs> the fuck was that? <laughs> Please remove that last one. <laughs> it was pretty gross. <laughs> I'm a bit clear right now. I don't remember what it was, but it's gone now. There, it's gone. Cleared. The grapefruit method. <laughs> I know you fucking did it. Shh. We can't talk about that kind of stuff. We can still use MasterCard on this site, all right? We want to keep going that way. You can't talk about that. You can't talk about that kind of stuff. Shut My payment processor is going to be so mad. <laughs> it's going to be so bad. <sighs> Speaking of mad... The internet was pretty upset, pretty upset at some recent news concerning Fortnite. <sighs> Time Studios came up with a new event in Fortnite called the March Through Time. Let me play the video for you. Pop this open here. Hold on, hold on, slow down, slow down. I gotta full screen you. I gotta full screen you first. There we go. It would be fatal for the nation to overlook the urgency of the moment. Now is the time to rise from the dark and desolate valley of segregation. Let freedom ring from every hill and mole hill of Mississippi, from every mountainside. Let freedom ring. I have a dream today. Okay, now before you guys say anything, or you can say whatever you want, right? Listen, <clears throat> this is cringe. This is some really weird corporate cringe. But, I think it's a great idea. I think it's a great idea. Because, here in the States, in schools, in some schools, they're trying to uh, pull away from discussing the U.S.'s racist history, right? And so, if the government doesn't, if the education system doesn't want to teach kids, then what better way than through a means that they are already there, like they're already present for. So for me, I think this is cringe as fuck, okay? This is weird, okay? <laughs> like it's really fucking weird, but it's also kind of a fucking good idea. That seems sort of neat. They could do something like that in using a game, yeah. So it's, it's a teaching tool because some of these people have no idea who MLK was. Maybe they didn't learn it in school. They haven't learned it yet. Or their teacher skipped over for whatever reason. <laughs> or they're in a school that doesn't teach those things. So this is this is a, 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 a way to get to, to, to keep, that, uh, keep that information in, cir in circulation. Something we should know about, right? Yeah, U.S. has a fucking massively racist history. It still does. <laughs> we can't just wipe that clean. So, hey, give them another outlet. I thought this was a fucking pretty rad idea. Super cringe, but rad. It's extremely cringe, but it's not a bad idea. I find Minecraft as a tool in, in schools cringe, but I fully uh, understand it's useful. It's, it's uh, potential. Phase one, you have to leave it to video game companies to teach your kids about your country's history. Exactly. <clears throat> it's like that Minecraft library that anyone around the world can access. So wait, but is it history if it's still going on? <laughs> are our are, are eyes only mirrors if we could see them or whatever the fuck <laughs> he said? <laughs> Too deep. <laughs> so yeah, that's something that's gonna be starting. Um uh no uh fuck 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 date 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 uh soon. <laughs> soon. Uh August no no uh fuck I, I don't have the date here. Let's do. Um, 
See, it's already, oh, it's already happening. It's already happening. Okay, that's my other day here. Uh, it's, I mean, the person's personality is important, not what uh, what sex they are and you know, the color of their skin. That's sure. That's what that's what people should believe. That's not what people. Not all people believe though. Not all people think that way. I appreciate Nestorados that you have that. You take that approach. That's the way it should be. Tell your friends that don't think that. <laughs> Uh, see, so you were watching. You were watching the stream. Okay, so it's up now. So politicians will use it to blame gains for racism as well as violence. Now, of course, of course, because yeah, you know, radicalizing these kids by teaching them about our racist history. How dare they? We can't. We can't have our 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 kids doubting the government because of our past. Whatever. <clears throat> I say, yep, continue to teach everyone is racist, so we will always be racist and never see people as people. You can teach history, but you can you teach can you not teach how we come together as well? Sure. Oh, you kidding me? I am the MLK thing, that is a story about coming together. That is like a great example of Yeah, I have a dream. Talking about kids playing together and having a good time, regardless of the race, religion, anything, right? Yeah, it's a story of coming together. It's perfect. Moving on. <laughs> this was actually a uh, uh, this is actually a more of a utility thing for some of you guys <clears throat> who are maybe running on uh, uh, slightly older machines or something like that, and you're trying to get the maximum performance out of your system. So there's this thing called FSR. Uh, it is uh, it is a, a scaling tool that um, will allow you to play at lower resolutions and scale it up, and it will look good at a higher resolution now i i have not personally tested this out but uh our our own jordan banana uh he used it and i believe he said that he got a uh he, he got a much better performance out of it or something right he, he posted pictures but um <clears throat> i suffer for the poor oh my god <sighs> which sounds all well good till you get in game with a hacker uh, so it says uh, AMD FSR Fidelity Super uh, su Fidelity FX Super Resolution can now be added to virtually every game using the latest lossless scaling tool. So it basically will allow you to, and it's it's there's two different ways you could get it. You can get it through here, um, or you could get it, like, you could get it through like downloading it directly, the actual tool, or you could buy it on Steam. Actually, there's like a five dollar or three dollar tool or something that you can buy on steam that'll basically do the same thing um so if you're somebody who is you know you're, you're maybe you're sitting on like a 780 or something like that right now still right and so like you're you're some games are just not really running that great but maybe at 720p they run great and you want to scale it up this might be an option for you guys so is it the same as nvidia's dlss you know i don't know i don't at that level of uh, uh of tech i'm not necessarily that um <clears throat> Uh, that keen on uh, but what i've what i was told was this is something that should be in the news because a lot of people would benefit from this so here it is H hashtag ad I'm, I'm not gonna pay for it it's jordan said but he's right so if any of you guys are having issues you want to give us a shot maybe it's something that could save you a few hundred or a few thousand dollars on a video card uh there it is now <clears throat> moving on it's kind of a funny story actually this is already available for free, part of custom Proton builds. Could be really nice on the Steam, on the Steam Deck uh, to get some, uh, uh, some extra frames of plugging into TV. There you go. There you go. Apparently, uh, it is not AI trained temporal solution like NVIDIA DL DLSS or the Intel Tech. There you go. Yeah. Yeah. Um, something goes wrong, please. FSR is technically not DLSS. Uh, it does some other things, but it helps all. There you go. Ah, it might help Chisel, too. Is Chisel back up with his gear? I think so. He's playing... Uh, space space game so probably uh world of warships Apollo. oh my god I've, I've i've i forgot to switch to just chatting huh uh world of warships this is actually really funny apologizes for issuing promo code that personally attacked the content creator i saw this tweet from massively op and i was like no fucking way no fucking way is a company that dumb all right crime thank you so much oh let's turn off but thank you so <clears throat> I'll have to just read this. It says, uh, it says the latest controversy started when a Russian language World of Ships community contributor named Turi accused wargaming developers of not playing the game they work on. Something that we all do. 
We've all done this, okay? But he was part of the partner program. And so it says, Wargaming responded by removing him from the contributor program. And while this may seem a bit heavy-handed, it gets a lot worse. And the worldwide community took notice when during an official Russian language stream, Wargaming presented the audience with a bonus code. It says... W zero L A X U five F K U T U R Y five English language players noted the code obtained contained a combination of letters that appeared to send a profane message to one specific person. Fuck you, Turi. <laughs> And lest you think it was unhappy coincidence, Wargaming conducted an internal investigation to determine the code was indeed intentional. Here's the Google translation of the apology. It says, as you know, last Friday on our official stream, we distributed a bonus code with inappropriate content, insulting our player and popular streamer Turi. This is absolutely unacceptable. And we conducted an internal audit and found that this situation was due to the actions of one employee. He has been suspended and subjected to the strictest measures based on the results of the audience. <laughs> <laughs> Typical wargaming. This feels like such a wargaming thing. Listen, uh, let me tell you about the MMOs, he says to us back in 2008 when he was on our show. <laughs> let me tell you about the MMO. Okay, you guys know everything about MMOs. Sure, sure, sure. Uh, dude, I was streaming and uh, I got I got a code like that. Did you? <laughs> this is so wargaming, but it's also fantastic. And genius and goodness to them. Uh, <laughs> but wargaming don't play other games. Very true. Fuck, fuck Red 7 Blue. <laughs> fuck you, Red 7 Blue. Uh, <laughs> you remember that too? Yeah. <laughs> uh, yet if you use explicit language in the chat, it is a ban. Go figure. Yeah, wow. Just just really, 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 really absurd. Uh, speaking of absurd, but maybe... Did you guys hear about the, the Stardew Valley Cup? You guys hear about the Stardew Valley Cup? Stardew Valley Cup is a real is a real competition in Stardew Valley. Uh, <laughs> it is promoted by Concerned Ape, the creator of, uh, of of Stardew Valley. They got a nice little promo video here. All right, so this is real. This shit is real. And I was like, how are they going to do this? How are they even going to do this? And so I watched this video. It was like a 12-minute video or 8-minute video. I don't know. It was a 10-minute video. I was close. It was in the middle of the somewhere. Vault or the bull and he goes over a points-based system. Okay, It's a task-based system where they get points depending on the complexity or the randomness of that individual challenge. So think of it like collecting uh, achievement points, right? Listen to some of these. Bulletin board bundles in the community center, each of those are worth 10 points. You'll also get an additional 10 point bonus if you're able to finish the entire community center. If you then take it one step further and make it to Ginger Island and find a golden walnut, you'll get 15 points. If a team goes to the egg hunt and between all four of them, they're able to collect every single egg, then they will get 15 points. Or if any of their players win the ice fish, Look at the list. That's the list. So what they do, this video was the first time that the competing teams, which I think is like what, three teams of four, right? Is it three teams of four or is it four teams of four? I think it's three teams of four. Um, they, this is the first time seeing it. So now those people are, those teams are going to go through this list and they're gonna plot out for each person on the team how they're going to achieve the best path to get the most the most points so after watching this video i am sold off this is a really cool idea uh, idea sorry uh any percentage uh speed run yeah um don't want to be the guy that tracks this shit it's a lot of stuff to track uh but 
I mean, it's a really cool system because you could develop these lines to take. You could develop the, uh, uh, you could give everybody assignments and everything. Uh, how different the route, yeah, how different routes will teams take? Yeah, there's going to be so many different routes. Some of them might be like easy. It's like, like 25 points if they get to floor 100 uh, in uh, in the SC. Uh, and then 10 points if we, if we reach a level 120 of the mines. Like that takes a good amount of time. 40K is not nearly enough for all this shit. That's like 15 bucks an hour. <laughs> <laughs> yes, so the winnings team winning teams will be splitting uh, dollar amounts. Uh, I think the maximum the maximum for the first place is like eight thousand or something like that, uh, or maybe more than that actually. But yeah, so it's 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 mostly in good fun, but they're also going to make some money off of it, and it's going to be streamed on this guy's channel, uh, Unsurpassable Z. So he's going to be streaming it. Uh, this video, <clears throat> yeah, but this, I'll put this video in chat if you guys want to watch it, but it's actually really, really, uh, really, really cool to see how they broke everything out. Um, and then this, I feel, I mean, I've, I've, I'm, <laughs> I think this guy is like this. He's so excited for this. And it's just like, this is cool for this guy as a content creator, right? This is his first time hosting an esports event he's going to be hosting it with concerned ape uh i don't know how they're going to get those screens up if they're going to choose like one person screen to watch there's no spectator camera in it there's going to be at least four different or three different worlds if there's three different teams that they have to monitor i have no idea how they're going to do it um we're meeting here to watch right God, wait when is it you see it's september let me see uh see no 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 oh you didn't put the date here ma, 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 ma. okay it's in the tweet it's in the tweet concerned eight um september 4th 9 a.m pacific let me see hi sunday whoop september 4th oh it's saturday next saturday shit we might it's gonna be a long stream though <laughs> can multi watch on discord and swap between full screen and multi yeah no it, this this sounds like a pretty rad idea like even after everything this sounds like a pretty rad idea um a lot of work a lot of points to be to be balanced, like you know, to to be managing and all that stuff, but 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 but, pretty fucking rad. Uh, how long is the time limit? I don't know what the time limit is. I don't know. Um, but is September already. I know. I fucking know. <clears throat> yeah, it's a pretty rad idea. You know what else is a pretty rad idea? Speaking of Star Do. How about Mountain Dew Flaming Hot? New flavor, online order only. From the makers of a million other Mountain Dew flavors comes Flaming Hot. Now, it's currently coming soon status, so it's not sold out. It's not available yet. You can only order two cases. <laughs> Burn my bladder. I asked some friends I would love to destroy. I, I, I actually want some of this. I am somebody who enjoys a uh, jalapeno margarita, right? Any kind of like sweet alcoholic drink that has like jalapeno in it or some kind of spice to it. I actually really like that. If you haven't tried it. Like, I, I highly recommend it. It's really fucking good to get a little bit of heat, a little bit of spice with the sweet, right? And I think that's what they're going for. I can't imagine. Now, wait, there's somebody who, there's some, somebody who, uh, maybe on TikTok or something like that, like mashed up a bunch of flaming Hot Cheetos and they put like, put them on like an apple or watermelon or something like that. And apparently that's fucking delicious. So maybe there's something here. This could actually be pretty good. Uh, you're just expecting to taste like the bottom of a flame hot Cheetos bag. I know, I know. Like I can't, I don't, I can't imagine liquefying flame hot Cheetos and then eating them. That sounds disgusting. But heat and sweet, there's a reason why it rhymes. Spicy sweetness is pretty dope, though. That's right. That's right. I was so prepared for you to say and snort it. <laughs> yes. <laughs> That's exactly what I did. I did it with a I did it with a uh, with a boba straw too. I want to make sure I get it all at once. <laughs> get all of it at once. So yes, we chili sauce is pretty dope. That's right. It whoa, was a mustard on watermelon. That's right. It was mustard on watermelon. That's right. It was. It was. So that's coming soon. 
August 31st in four days. That's like Monday or something. Isn't that Monday? Sure is not. Uh, it's Tuesday. I was close. Tuesday. Get your orders in. <laughs> I'm going to have this open. I'm going to try to remember this. <laughs> right in time for Star Do. That's right. Do the do. Flaming hot. <laughs> That's it for the news. Thank you so much for watching. My name is Mike B. A.K. Phony. I'm joined today, as always, by my lovely chat and this lovely tail, my cat. Hi, Sunday. Hi, Sunday. Thank you. Thank you so much for joining me. Hold on a second. Hold on a second. There we go. Let's get, let's get my girl in there. There she is. Oh, she's so good. She's so good. Such a good girl. She's just so good. I'm going to pour yeah. Oh, you're so good, baby. That's right. That's right. All right. Thank you so much for watching. Chat hangout. I'll see you guys.